Chapter 8. Chapter 8 could also be called the Handel chapter. Uh, this is the chapter on the uh, Baroque Oratorio, and uh, George Friedrich Handel is the guy who's credited as uh, creating the most famous oratorio of all time, and that's uh, the Messiah. So Handel's Messiah, which of course has the famous chorus, um, uh, Alleluia. And uh, you've heard this all the time. You've heard it in movies. I'm sure you've heard it in commercials. It, you can't have lived this long and not heard uh, the Hallelujah Chorus. little explanation uh, that needs to be uh, given here. Uh, I'm not going to spend too much time on this. I, I did want to go through a couple of things to help you with pronunciation of some things because that's not always in here. Um, an oratorio's collection of well, first of all, an oratorio, uh, unlike the two chapters that we skipped, uh, the opera, which became very popular in the uh, late Renaissance, the concepts of the, or the ideas that the madrigals brought to towns as they traveled around towns, and, and you can imagine during uh, Shakespeare's time, which was late Renaissance, uh, entertainment was, where, where did you get your entertainment? Whether you were a rich or poor person, you got your entertainment from... Uh, people who would travel around and, and provide your entertainment via um, a music or uh, in Shakespeare's um, uh, stage uh, plays. And so that's where you got your entertainment. And so the concept of merging the music and the, and the drama, well, that was inevitable. And so what happened was uh, magical singers and actors were basically one and the same. And so they would do songs and then they would do dramas. Eventually that combined so that it was all music and all drama, costumes, stage, and you know, sword fighting all at once. And that's that was opera. Now we're into the oratorio. And again, the power of the church is still pretty strong. And the church, of course, being a, a wealthy patron, if I can call it that, um, sponsored many, many um, uh, composers to compose music for the church and to be performed in the church. Uh, the popularity of the opera could not have been ignored by um, the powers that be. And so this concept of creating an operatic material that was based on the Bible, minus the costumes and the acting, became very popular. And so the oratorio sprung forth, and Handel being the most famous writer of those. So if you're to attend an oratorio, what you would hear is you would hear an overture. Okay, played by the orchestra at the time. We'll get more into what those instruments are in the next chapter. But the orchestra would perform an oratory, which would play material from the oratory, thematic material. So in other words, you'll hear a theme. You'll hear Alleluia by the orchestra prior to the whole oratory happening. Following the, the uh, overture will be various choruses where all four voices would sing together with the orchestra. And when I say four voices, I mean all the sopranos. There could be 20, 25 of them, depending on the size of the chorus. Equal number of altos, tenors, and basses singing all parts together, polyphonically or homophonically, or a combination of both. Uh, in between the choruses, you would hear uh, arias being sung by a solo with accompaniment from the orchestra, a solo soprano alto, tenor, or bass. Oftentimes in those um, arias that they're singing will be a recitative section. Now recitative is spelled R-C-I-T, etc., etc., uh, but it's pronounced recitative is how that's pronounced. So a recitative and an aria. The recitative normally is a lot of text all at once to give you background material on what you're going to hear next. Then the aria is more expressive, less wordy, more melismas, Lots of melismas, especially in the arias, in the oratorio, the Messiah. Okay, one little thing that I wanted to mention also, and I'll touch on that as well. Um, uh, there's the rumor, the tradition, is that uh, we, when we hear the oratorio, and usually hear this at Easter time, um, you hear the, the entire oratorio. When the oratorio gets to the hallelujah chorus, which is actually near the end, but not the end, it's not the end, the tradition is we stand up, and so the audience will stand up to listen to the Messiah, the, uh, the Hallelujah Chorus from the Messiah. Is it appropriate to stand up if it's just instrumentalists playing the Messiah? I don't know. I don't think so. I don't think you should. Should you stand up when you hear a recording of it? No. You're driving, you shouldn't stand up. Okay, so <laughs> is it true? Yeah, it's, uh, it's probably true that King George II did stand up upon hearing that. I think 
my own opinion here. I think what really happened, uh, the guy had been sitting there for an hour plus listening to Ari. It's very beautiful stuff. It was great. Uh, when the full orchestra came in and all the singers came in to sing, Hallelujah! He thought it would go unnoticed if he would just stand up and stretch a little bit. Well, who's not going to notice the king standing up? Okay? So my guess is that when he stood up, everyone looked around and said, he stand we should stand. Let's stand up. I'm guessing that's what happened. Okay, one other little thing. Uh, the passion. A passion is um, based upon the, cruci upon, uh, the, the text is based upon the crucifixion of Christ uh, and is almost always performed during Easter because that's when that is um, that is when the church is talking about those items. Try not to get too uh, religious here about things. Okay, a couple of differences on page, a couple of things to pronounce on measure uh, page twenty one. Uh, we have uh, hearing the difference thing that if you want to do this, it's kind of cool. But Bach, who we're going to talk about a lot in the next chapter, he wrote a thing called Vachet Auf, which is the German pronunciation, cantata number 140, wanting you to compare that to Hallelujah, uh, to Handel's Hallelujah Chorus. Might be an interesting thing to do. Um, okay, so that's it, really. This is the Handel chapter, so we're going to go on to chapter number 9 and start getting into Bach and instrumental music.